you think the Shadowlands lore is good or underbacked? Well, I think Shadowlands lore was maybe fumbled pretty hard in execution, but I don't know if I would say. Like, look, I think it doesn't really matter how bad I or anyone else really thinks it is. If it's part of the canon universe, that's it's part of the canon universe, and it's what I do is I take what is what's part of the canon universe and I try to make it fit while exploring alternatives for narratives that maybe are a little bit unorthodox or maybe might not necessarily be like surface level narratives that are recurring. And so I think that Xerath Mortis especially is a lot of that subsurface level narrative and there's a lot of very deep introspective things that come from the, the language cipher of the first ones and from Farim and stuff like that that I think take a lot of pondering. They take a lot of revisiting and uh and so i think that there's really some beautiful and fun things to find there i just wish that shadowlands and execution wasn't so rough and i've even said you know i used to rip into steve denuser real hard but i think as i've grown and matured over the last couple of years it's been easier for me to forgive and you know kind of give a little bit more credit you know I think considering the absolute fallout that was happening at Blizzard, the guy was trying to take something that had been really heavily, you know, manipulated by one of the worst people involved with the scandal and tried to make something, you know, interesting and good narrative-wise post-Legion that wasn't completely untrue to the world itself, but also just didn't really take us anywhere. Uh, I think the biggest regret of Shadowlands is the unnecessary reintroduction of Arthas Menethil. I think that the concept of forging a Mornblade is important, but I don't think that the presence of Arthas' soul is necessary in any capacity to tell that story. If anything, it would have been cool if the fucking Mornblade was, like, forged with part of Sylvanas' soul and, like, had nothing to do with Arthas, but, like, that in and of itself, like, freaked Sylvanas the fuck out and she didn't want anything to do with it anymore because she realized part of her own soul was being used to control Andu and Rin. So she felt guilty for that, and that's why she turned against the Jailer. What a concept that would have been! It's not that fucking hard, you know what I'm saying? You just have to put the pieces in the right order, you know? Maybe a part of, part of Sylvanas, part of Uther, you know? Maybe part of Varrock, something, like, just, some, I don't know, something to make it that they, they don't have to despoil Arthas' fucking entire legacy as a character. I totally get the frustration, and I think it is warranted, you know? I think the frustration about Sylvanas beating Bolvar is pretty fucking lame. Like, I think, <laughs> canonically, it makes perfect sense why she would absolutely kind of shit on Bolvar at, at this level, at this point. And I don't really personally think Bolvar's that cool. I think Paladin Bolvar at the Wrathgate was cool. I think Bolvar post Lich King is kind of pretty, kind of fucking lame, to be honest with you. Um, so I don't really have, like, a lot of good things to say about him. So when it came to Sylvanas fucking on Bolvar in the cutscene, it's like, you know what, dude? Cool cool. It was awesome, and she's powerful, and Bolvar sucks. The Lich King is cool, and Arthas is really cool, and, the, and Frostborn is sick. Don't get me wrong. All those things are cool, but Bolvar as the Lich King? Eh, maybe not so much. <laughs> Bolvar is one of the flattest, most uninteresting characters in the game to me right now, and I kind of, that's part of why I checked out for Shadowlands, because his role in Shadowlands just kind of bothered me. He just kind of felt like a vessel for the story. He felt like a, just like a pawn type of character to like move the narrative forward but it never really felt like he was really actually important or going to do anything meaningful when he yeah when his helmet was gone he kind of turned from threatening to like just crispy charred dk cadgar he was he just wasn't cool he just wasn't edgy you know and i think that that's part of why people perceive that wow has kind of like a whack story even though like shadowlands is kind of metal when you realize all the different concepts, like memory erasure and shit that happens in the Shadowlands, you realize how fucked up it is. And you're like, yikes, dude. <laughs> but um, at the same time, like, maybe that's, maybe that isn't to some degree a natural function of the Shadowlands. Maybe you're not really supposed to keep your memory when you die and you're reborn as a soul later. That kind of makes sense. But like, you know, the, it's just the premise of how it actually operates currently. That's so scary. And it's just like, I don't know. Bolvar and just kind of like, he's just not edgy and cool like Arthas was as the Lich King. I don't know. 
just not nearly as much. Could have been forged from the good side of Arthas, Uther, Sylvanas, and when she when she gets her soul reunited, she retains good memories from Arthas, becoming one of th with him in the blade, changing her perspective. It is something like it's forged from like I just don't think Arthas really needs to be involved at all. I just think that like I mean he could, I get it, with Sylvanas and Uther. I get it. I get it. If you're going to involve him though, that's probably a better way to do it. Some kind of thing, yeah, where they're all like forged together. She it changes her perspective on Arthas's position, makes makes her realize that perhaps Arthas was just as much of a pawn as the jailer that she's looking at. You know. I mean that spurs something within her that changes the composition of the blade that's been forged with the other part of her soul. Like igniting the fucking sword and like light, essentially letting Anduin Rin break free of the grasp of domination. Like, there's so many different cool narrative things you could fucking do. Like, not to say that that's like the best one or that's like you know do that one, but it's just it's just an option. Like, so there, there's there's it's not like there was only one way to do it. And I think that that's when I listened over to the Talias and Nevatel interview with Denuser for the Shadowlands um, Alpha which I linked in Discord last night, it, it was actually a really good interview. I think, I would also like to say that I think Taliesin did a great job in the interview, first of all, and that I thought the questions were really good and brought some very interesting responses from Steve the Newser. So, you know, credit where credit's due. Um, but I really liked, uh, to a degree, one of the things uh, Steve the Newser said, um, which was, well, I liked it, but I didn't like it. Which was that, like, there's there's a bunch of different options, and, you know, they're kind of, you know, considering which ones to go with, and what's the smarter option, and it makes me think that, like, even if it's not, like, canonically true in the game, that the more overtly obvious plot with the Primus is, was an option. It was. Like, they, there was an option on the table for them to be very clear about the Primus manipulating, the, uh, manipulating Zoval, and, like, doing this. And it's really disappointing that that more complex and actually, I think, cooler and like other people have speculated clearly as well, a really cool option. It's it's really disheartening that that was not what they chose, because it seems very obvious that it, it was on the table and that they pushed it aside for something much more stale, less overt about the story that they were telling, a little less in your face, and I think that that was a mistake, frankly, and I think that Dragonflight is an example of how they've learned from that being a mistake. Like, it's okay to have the contrived story, but you need to tell- you need to put the, the pieces in place at the right times, otherwise people are not gonna think it's good. They're just gonna see it as some cringe, next-level powerful character that is the Jailer, you know, Zoval, one of the power to fucking- it's like, bleh, dude, come on. It can be so much better than that, so. And it doesn't have to be overly contrived. In fact, in some ways, it's more contrived because they chose what they did than it could have been if they would have just been more overt about what the Primus was really doing. And it's like, bleh, dude, like, why? How can you let that happen? Like, and it just, I hate to say this, chat, but I feel like human behavior is, like, very similar across different, like, systems. Okay, and this is like a, this is like a robotic way to think about it the way I'm describing it, but, like, it doesn't necessarily matter what you're working on. If you lose passion or you lose drive or you lose direction for what you're working on, you t I feel like it's very common that you flounder, that you kind of like, and it happens in all forms of like business. It doesn't matter if you're designing a game, if you're working at a fucking restaurant, it doesn't matter. Like when you, f when you start to fizzle out, it becomes harder to like deliver that punch any as much anymore. And I just think that like, if they can't, you know, like sometimes it seems like maybe the narrative team needs that little bit of punch. Like, and maybe, maybe like how Final Fantasy XIV founded in their Myths of the Realm series with the 12 gods, letting their youngest, some of their youngest writers do that, I think is a good thing because it, it allows like this expression of like a new, a new interpretation of like something that's been around for a long time. And I just, I just think fresh minds are really important. And it, and it seems like maybe during those days of Shadowlands, and during those days of BFA, that something, maybe it was Morham related, Morheim related, maybe it was Metzen related, maybe it was both. Something was lost that like took that wind out of the sails, you know? And it seems like maybe Metzen's return has reignited that and kind of brought the winds of change back a little bit and are kind of steering them on their course now instead of them just kind of being lost in the maelstrom 
that is like the ocean of, of World of Warcraft story without Alex Fuckface Afrasiabi, without Chris Metzen, without these other guys that have been around for so long, you know? And this is all to say and, and loop back to that, you know, Steve Denuser probably wrote a couple things that maybe were didn't have, you know, as much taste or whatever as, as I would like, but am I not just as guilty in things that I've done in my life as far as being tasteless or not necessarily having the, <laughs> the, the right thought process about how I was going to deliver it? Maybe, sure, but like, if I am going to receive of forgiveness from other people, then I feel like that lenience and that forgiveness should also be extended to other people. And I think that it, for me, one of those people has been Steve Denuser. And that is not to say that all mistakes are amended and that, you know, everything necessarily that happened with Sylvanas and Arthas is like, oh, it's all fine now. But like, I think that remembering that he is a human being who has a very important job that was probably extremely difficult to carry out during the circumstances. I think that Pyromancer from a couple years ago would not have been able to see that. And as much, you know, vitriol as I may receive of in my position, having come back and, you know, and having started playing this game again, like, I'm prepared to handle that. But I think that that is one thing that has changed about me that, that people probably would not expect or would not think. And, uh, and so as much as I do want to, at some level, disregard the Shadowlands lore, fuck the first ones, who cares about that? It doesn't, doesn't matter. I think that it can, I think it can make sense. I really do. I think it can make sense. And I think that, that there is, is logic there. And I think that there's a storyline there that just really got maybe just kind of lost in its direction. And it's just a, it's just frustrating because I know just as well as anyone else that's worked for a corporation that you would like to feel like you sit in a seat of power to some degree but there's always a bigger fish. <laughs> always. There's always someone above you, unless you are at the top. And even then, you got the government or someone like that on you. So like, it's, it doesn't matter. So 